we uh, looked at problems one through three. Uh, here we're going to do problems four through six from those practice problems. Let's get started. Tangent times this stuff. Look, I see stuff times other stuff. I'm going to multiply it out. That's the first thing I'm going to do. So do it. So I multiply tangent times tangent. That's tangent squared. Tangent times cotangent. I'll just write that like that for now. Now look, I need to know that tangent is the same thing as 1 over cotangent, and cotangent is the same thing as 1 over tangent. I need to know that. All right. So if I replaced cotangent with 1 over tangent, so I'm replacing this with 1 over tangent, it would be tangent over tangent, which is 1. So let's assume that, okay, maybe I don't remember that. There's another way. So tangent squared plus what's tangent? Sine over cosine. What's cotangent? Cosine over sine. Well, it crosses out. That's right. These two. What does that whole expression become? It becomes 1. So now I have tangent squared plus 1. Uh, what is that equal to? Well, you should know what it equals because there's an identity associated with it. It's not this identity, but it's like it. It's based on it. Is, look, how can I get something that looks like tangent squared out of this stuff? Well, tangent squared would be like sine squared over cosine squared. I have a sine squared here, so if I divided everything by cosine squared, that would give me the right kind of expression. Now look what happens. Sine squared over cosine squared, that's tangent squared. By the way, we've done this already in another video. So this is something, even though we only saw it once, you've got to know. Cosine squared over cosine squared, that's 1. 1 over cosine squared, that's, oh man, that's secant squared. So look what we have. We have a proof right here that shows us that tangent squared plus 1 literally equals secant squared, which is what we were trying to prove. So we're done. That means I'm done. Five. Number five allows us again something nice. We've got a secant. That tells me, oh man, I can rewrite that guy. So I rewrite everything down. Sine squared, cosine x. Secant is one over cosine. What happens right away? Tell me. What happens? What happens? What happens? That's right. This stuff crosses off and becomes one. So now I just have sine squared x on the left hand side. But look at what we've already proved. Uh, where is it? We proved that sine squared, like over here, remember, we proved that sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared, which is, which is what we're trying to prove. So I can literally now just write equals 1 minus cosine squared, and I'm done. And I can say that's because of the Pythagorean identity. I proved that. Let's move on. Now, this is going to be a doozy. But it's not bad, it's just fractions. We're going to have to add a couple of fractions. I've got a secant, a cosecant, and a tangent. First thing I'm going to do, first thing always, 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 rewrite in terms of sine and cosine. So let's do that. Yep, that's what it looks like. That right there. I've rewritten it in terms of sine and cosine. If you're not there, get there. You're there? Okay, good. Let's move on. I need, you better believe it, I've got 1 over cosine plus 1 over sine. Those are fractions. I need a common denominator. What... Do these both have, well, this a cosine and a sine. That means the denominator is cosine times sine. So cosine times sine. That's the denominator. Here's how I decide, like, what goes up top. I'm looking at this piece right now, okay? That's what we're looking at. What does this thing have that this doesn't have? Well, it has a sine, right? Yep. So that sine has to go up top, too. All right, now let's look at this piece. Same denominator, cosine times sine. Now what does this thing have that this doesn't have? Yep, it has a cosine, so the cosine goes up top too. Now what did I actually do? Well, the, back, the background work was I multiplied this thing times cosine over cosine, and I multiplied this thing times sine 
over sine. Yeah, I multiplied it by 1. So see how this became this, and this became this? Yep, that's true. you got to do it again. How do I add 1 plus sine over cosine? Well, I've got to give it the same denominator. How can I make 1 have the denominator of cosine? Well, what's 1? It's the same thing over the same thing, right? So I'm going to replace 1 with cosine over cosine. And then I'm adding sine over cosine. Yep, that's real. It's all is one fraction. That's it. So, like, look, I've written sine plus cosine over that denominator. We'll do the same thing for the bottom. There it is. Did it for the bottom. Cosine plus sine all over cosine. Uh, yeah, you better believe what's about to happen is going to happen. I have something that looks like this, right? A over B over C over D. What does that equal? A over B times D over C, right? That's the whole fundamental idea behind multiplying by the reciprocal. That's what that means. In this case, literally, this is A, that's B, that's C, that's D. So we're multiplying it. We're doing it. We're going for it. There it is. I've done it. I'm just going to label them A, B, D, C. Did all the pieces, multiplied it correctly. Now, look at this fancy stuff that happens. Or you tell me. Yeah, this is the same as that, right? So what does it become? It becomes 1. So I can cross that off. Now let's just rewrite it. Cosine is left. Cosine sine's left on the bottom. What happens with that stuff? The by cosines. Now look, what's left on top? Not nothing, so don't be writing nothing. You guys do that sometimes. No, there was something there before, so when I divide by cosine, there's still something there. It's a 1 all over a sine. And that, yeah, that's cosecant, which is what I was trying to prove. And I proved it, so I'm done. Cheers.